you guys know we've talked about hey you got to get uncomfortable you gotta you've got to seek discomfort and put yourself in uncomfortable the uncomfortable is where all growth happens personally and this is fact and the funny thing about life is life is going to deliver discomfort to you whether you seek it or not but if you seek it life will deliver pleasure it's 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 the most it's like an it's like a law mm -hmm. and yeah, and i have found truth. it to be true everywhere okay. i go and everyone i talk to What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow. Ow. Yes, yes, yes. This is episode 155. Oh, my gosh. Of the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm trying to get up here closer to you. Is that all right? <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. So this is going to be a cool episode um, because Joseph has recently been through a pretty interesting experience. And I uh, want to allow him to uh, share that and then really talk about how you, the person listening or watching this, can take something from that and implement it in your own life. Maybe not the same thing, but something similar right. uh, in your everyday routine. So why don't you just kind of tell everybody about what happened? Hmm. Well, down? when I was four years old, <laughs> um, I guess I should start with kind of how I, I got to my journey in Poland, right? So four years ago, four, five years ago it's been a few years yeah. right how long have we been in this office uh three three and then we were over so it was probably two years so five years five years this january or so um i heard a podcast and it and it's gonna sound crazy but it was um i listened to joe rogan i i love the interviews that he does the long form and he had a guy named Wim Hof on his on his podcast and they called him the ice man. And, you know, my brother had said, hey, this one's interesting. You should listen to this. And um, so I did. And he was talking about how um, he was it was in the mid 90s and his wife had killed herself. She had suffered from anxiety, depression, wow. all kind of stuff, left him with four small children. It was the darkest time in his life. You can imagine. Um, that's a rough, rough situation. And he's from the Netherlands. And, and, um, and so it was midwinter and he's in the darkest time of his life. He doesn't know a way forward. And he had always been an athlete, but he was out early one morning and, and, I remember listening to that podcast. I'm going to go back and listen to it again now because I'm sure I will get more out of it now. Oh, yeah. But um, but so he 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 went. Um, he was out early one morning, and it was midwinter, snow, ice on the ground, and and there was a river near there, and it pulled up in a certain area, and he just stripped down and got in the water, hmm. and in that icy icy cold water. I mean that is that's. The, the water hovers around freezing. It's moving, so it doesn't freeze. But he said when he got in that some very unique things happened in that it was so painful that he was very, very present. And there was no living in the regrets of yesterday, mm -hmm. right, which we all do. Mm -hmm. And there was no living in the fear of tomorrow and what it would bring. He was very, very present. And, and so he started doing that more and he added breathing. He had studied yoga for a while and he added, he added breathing into it and, and really, really connected mind and body. And, and, and he be, you know, he noticed he wasn't getting sick. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't, you know, getting the sniffles and the colds and the flu and you know, like everybody goes through every year. And, and he started to believe that he would, he could influence his autonomic system. Okay. So you have your, 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 the system that we influence, like I just told my hands to move here and I'm, you know, that system. 
And then you have your autonomic system regulates your hormones, your heart rate, blood pressure, all that kind of stuff. And so science said at the time that it's impossible to, to control your autonomic system. That's why it's automatic, right? It's the system that, that goes while we're sitting here and, and, and not thinking about it, right. right? If I had to tell my heart to beat, that would make this podcast a little difficult. Is breathing your autonomic? It's the connection between it, the two. Do it. yeah, essentially. It's the connection between the two. That's a great question. Uh, it's one thing that I've learned. So, so unbeknownst to a lot of people, um, you know, I, I looked at his stuff, I read his stuff, and, and he had already started to be studied by science because he climbed in nothing but shorts in midwinter. He climbed to the death zone, 25,000 feet on Mount Everest. Um, there's people that die going to the death zone in full gear with oxygen tanks. He did it in shorts, no shoes, <laughs> no pants, no shirt. And, and science started studying him and, and he was able to raise his core temperature and keep it warm and on command. And, and they also studied his blood and how the metabolic rate was 300 times that of, of most people and independent of his body, his blood would shut down disease. And so it was just, it's very fascinating. He just fascinated me. But what really fascinated me was him coming out of that dark place into a happy, healthy, and strong place, right? Yep. And because unbeknownst to a lot of people, I would get up a lot of my days and be frustrated, angry, pissed off, um, depressed, anxious, and I hid it well, just like a lot of you listening to me, you hide it well, right? Nobody sees you Nobody sees the tears on the pillow at night or on the pillow in the morning or on the drive to work. Nobody sees that. You hide it well. You put on a good face or you mask it with medication or, or that kind of thing. And, and so I had been doing that. And when I woke up that January, it was, it was cold, um, which it doesn't get crazy cold here, but it was a cold snap. And my, my pool was partly, partly around the edges frozen. So mm -hmm. It was in the fountains were going to make sure it didn't freeze and, and that kind of thing. And, and I woke up at, you know, 334 in the morning and I was like, what will it hurt? Hmm. What will it hurt? What will it hurt to go get in the cold water? And I think I'd been other at my than your entire body, other than other than <laughs> the pain than of everything. the cold water. Right. <laughs> and, and I said, that may be uncomfortable, but I'm, I'm uncomfortable now. Hmm. And so and so I was like, what, is, what does it hurt? Maybe that crazy dude. Maybe he caught something. And and so I, I went out and stripped down and, and got in my pool. It was dark outside. And I probably only stayed for 30 seconds to a minute. Um, but I remember taking a big breath and blowing it out and sinking down to the bottom of the pool. And, and for the first time in as long as I could remember, I was utterly at peace. I was peace and present the word peaceful is really cool if you break it down it means nothing broken nothing missing isn't that fascinating mm -hmm. and so and so my my journey there began right and and i started taking cold showers at the end of my shower i started listening to more of his stuff and 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 this is this this podcast is not a promotion of him it's just the way that i that i've found my way through this journey right and and so I literally that year told everybody I was waging war on everything. And they thought maybe waging war in business externally, right? Mm -hmm. Waging war and, and, and doing this, uh, you know, cause I'm an alpha and they take it that way. But what I, what I decided to do was wage war on personal change and, and go inward and face the things that cause me to live in fear of tomorrow the chaos of tomorrow, the what ifs, the, the, the what could happen and to quit living in, in the, man, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish, cause what that does is it steals your right now. It steals it. And, and so that started that journey five years ago. And, um, and it was, it was, it's been a long journey. It's been crazy, but I have found, I have found a peace inside me that I never thought I would never thought I would find. And so you guys know, we've talked about, Hey, you got to get uncomfortable. You gotta, you've got to seek discomfort 
and put yourself in uncomfortable. The uncomfortable is where all growth happens personally. And this is fact. And the funny thing about life is life is going to deliver discomfort to you, whether you seek it or not. But if you seek it, life will deliver pleasure. It's, it's, it's the most, it's like an, it's like a law. Mm -hmm. And, and I have found it to be true everywhere Mm -hmm. I go and everyone I talk to. And so fast forward, you know, I learned his breathing techniques. I actually went to, um, went to one of his, uh, little half day workshops where I learned more and, and began to understand it was a, a practice. And, and, and so I got deeper into that and understanding myself. So that brings us to, to current, current day and time where, um, where I ended up just, just got back last week from Poland and I went on the winter expedition with Wim Hof and his, his teachers where it's a five day, six day, but the first day, you know, you're just, you're just getting there. But, but on that fifth day, you actually climb Mount Schneska in Poland in winter, snow and ice in your shorts. And, and you spend the prior days getting ready for it and training and understanding. And I had no idea. I thought, well, there, I know there's going to be cold water. I know there's going to be breathing. I know that I'm going to be climbing a mountain. Um, and, and Steve Weatherford and Jesse Itzler and who are some Aubrey Marcus, Lewis Howes. They had done it with Wim Hof the week before the week before I did. Mm -hmm. And I had watched some of their stuff. And let me tell you, (laughs) um, I, I, I was looking so forward to the trip until I watched their stuff. (laughs) I did. And, and I was, I literally was overcome with fear. I called Tom Shea, the Navy SEAL, 23 year Navy SEAL in this area. And, and I told him what I was doing. And, and he was like, I was on my way to the airport and he goes, he goes, buddy, you looking for exit ramps? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, Tom. Yes. Like I, I, I want to get in a car accident or twist my ankle or some legitimate reason why I cannot get on this plane and go. Um, and and he said he said um adventure without a safety net is truly living he said you know what you have to do and and i went okay i'm gonna go i'm gonna go there's gonna be like 100 people there so you know hopefully i'm a little more prepared than some of them or or not i don't know but but i had no idea i had no idea what i was really getting into and what I was really going to learn because he's uh, Wim Hof and uh, the Iceman has proven now through scientific research that you can influence your autonomic system, that that you you can control your core heat um, and and he calls that your inner fire. Um, But but to get there, there's great discomfort. There's great discomfort and when I got back, everybody was like, oh my God, how was climbing the mountain? You know, when we started the mountain, we actually did it on the fourth day because we were in the middle of a, of a, of a breathing and, and meditation that night before. And when we were done, um, Wim Hof goes, oh, tomorrow we do the mountain. And I was like, what? No, no, I'm supposed to have one more day to prepare. And he was like, you are all ready. We will do it together. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, inside, everybody was like, oh, clapping. And inside, I'm crying, <laughs> right? I'm like, why are y'all clapping? You're idiots. But but I climbing the mountain when we started that next morning was already a foregone conclusion. I had already made it to the top. I had already set my intention. And the discomfort, the four and a half hours it took of discomfort and concentration was I was already well prepared for it and it was already a done deal. The hardest thing was learning how in that cold water in this, in this cold river water with frozen ground was being in that for five to 10 minutes, which is excruciating, Mm -hmm. but learning about your physiology, where your blood leaves your extremities, your body is amazing. And, and, your body will protect the organs, your brain, your heart, all your internal, your trunk organs by, by sacrificing the extremity. So it pulls the blood from there in and, and, and protects that core. 
and understanding that the pain was just telling me something. Mm -hmm. It was just talking to me. Mm -hmm. um, and see, we fight biology on that, right? Because our brains are hardwired to do things, do two things, hardwired like from the get go to procreate. And we're not gonna talk about that today, but it's hardwired to keep you safe. And so the pain was telling me something and, and my brain was going fight or flight, like mm. get out of here or, or do or something die. or yeah. yeah. And to understand my physiology and then to have that mind body connection where you could go inside yourself and push blood back into your extremities and get out of the cold water and stand there on frozen ground, barefooted, wet, and with, with just your bathing suit on and, and influence your system to warm you back up. Um, it was, that was the hardest part for me. Um, and when you're an alpha, when you're a hard charger, when you're a fighter, you, you know, in the David Goggins stuff, you know, where he talks about taking the soul of, mm -hmm. of this or whatever, it was more of a surrender, mm -hmm. which is fascinating. It doesn't change the discomfort. It just changes how you deal with it. Right. Because and some people have asked me and, and asked my brother, because my brother went, well, you don't have to wear a jacket now and you're, are you impervious to cold? Like, <laughs> like you're some kind of superhuman. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and, and I'm like, N the cold always wins. Yeah. Like the cold wins. It's just teaching you something in the process. But that seeking of discomfort by that fourth day had me so prepared for the mountain. Hmm. And it was a foregone conclusion. And I was confident starting. And I thought about this on my journey up that mountain. I thought about this preparedness, preparedness brings confidence. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to us today and, and you're not confident in an area of your life, get prepared, get prepared, study it, practice it, do it. You know, the first time somebody walks in a gym, they're so uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 and they're like, I don't get on that machine or do this or do that. They're so unprepared. But if you're walking into that gym for the 5,000th time, you know, the machines backward and forward, you know, your body backward and forward, you're prepared, you're way more confident, right? Now, the only challenge there is to increase the discomfort of what you're doing, continually increase the discomfort because what all growth happens in discomfort. And that's the key. That is the key. Um, and you're you're going to go on a on a little winter expedition with with <clears> the uh, Wim Hof trainers here coming up in what month? Uh, March. In yeah, March. In March. So when Steve Weatherford got back, you know a lot of the same feelings that Joseph had when he got back is just you instantly miss the connectedness and the brotherhood and the camaraderie and and the relationships. And then obviously the experience being so powerful, wanting to experience that again. So he is hosting another experience uh, in March. And so myself and Amanda here at the office, uh, Chris Vester that went to Nicaragua, yeah. he's going to go. Yeah. He signed up last night. So. That's awesome. And I am equally as terrified. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. But you know what? Um, one of the things I did not expect and that has utterly changed my view of every human being is I did not expect, I mean, in, in my group of 27, cause we had a team that you would practice with all day and, 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 and would do that. And then you'd get together as the whole group, 100, 110 people each night. But what I did not expect was that community mm -hmm. and what a community actually looked like. I would have said before I left that we have it here in this office, because I think we're as close to it as I've ever seen mm -hmm. in a, in a corporation um, where we have that community, where we look out for each other. We love each other. We help each other through the hard times. And that sounds good, but to help people through the hard times, you have to be willing to get in their shit with them, mm -hmm. right? Walk through their shit with them. And that's uncomfortable. Most people would just rather that person put on a smiley, happy face. You put on a smiley, happy face. And we pretend like the elephant in the room's not there. Mm -hmm. But I would just as soon now go, there's the elephant. Let's eat it. <laughs> How do you do it? One bite at a time. 
and and walk through it because everybody's either in a storm coming out of a storm or headed to a storm such is the human condition and so that was one thing that i didn't expect there i know exactly what steve weatherford's after because my team the team name was ubuntu Mm -hmm. and it sounds like an african word because it is Mm -hmm. and it means i am because we are it's more philosophy Mm -hmm. and the community and how close i got to a group of people in five days blew my mind it was the biggest revolutionary shift in me that's that's happened Mm -hmm. and and to deal with myself through unconditional love has now opened me up to dealing with others through unconditional love and 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 seeing like tyler maitland arden like i see them as a whole now and and i care what happens i cared what happened to arden before Mm -hmm. she calls me uncle joe Mm -hmm. right but but to but to see that it's actually my responsibility as a human being to help raise her with you Mm -hmm. as a community so we've lost that community feeling in the western civilization we really have i mean i was on the plane coming back and and i and i I just stood up and looked around and everybody's sitting inches away Mm -hmm. from another person and never even acknowledging their existence Mm -hmm. We're on our phones, our laptops, we're caught in our own world. When, when the thing that we need to overcome in our world is sitting right beside us, mm-hmm. it's human connection. It's human connection. So I know what Steve Weatherford's after. Yeah. I know it. I know what he's trying to reproduce. And the closest thing he probably had to it was the locker room mm-hmm. in football. Yeah. It was probably the closest thing he had to it. And, and, and he probably struggles for words mm-hmm. and struggles for words to explain it to people. Because until you experience it, because we grow up without it. Yeah. And, and one of the things, this is off tangent, but one of, the, one of the things that struck me was just how when you are in that with a community, when you're locked in with a community, is the sharing and the kindness of that community towards one another and the forgiving nature of that just automatically. Hmm. Um, And I read an article that said out of recorded civilization that kindness worldwide is at an all-time low right now. And I see it everywhere now. It's it's so glaring to me. Um, You know, we're in line at a gas station and the person in front of us or the person behind us most of us couldn't tell you if they were male or female Mm -hmm. if they were black or white if they had clothes on or not Mm -hmm. we don't even acknowledge the people in our own communities and that we live with and and so that was one of the biggest things and one of the things that i talked to my kids about this weekend was kindness we are going to start dealing with the world through kindness and that doesn't mean you're a weak person that doesn't mean I'm gonna let somebody roll over me. That doesn't that doesn't mean that I'm that I'm gonna let somebody just take advantage of me, right? Because there's great power in kindness and vulnerability when you operate through those in your daily living. One question I had for you was in the climb yes. when you climb the mountain. Um, <laughs> what? How much communication was there? Like, how close were you in proximity to other people? How much talking was there mm-hmm. as you climbed? And was there a point where it stopped? And what, what was that like? Yeah, um, when you're, yeah, when it's, when the, when Mother Nature, as Wim Hof said, mm-hmm. Mother Nature took out her whip mm-hmm. about halfway through, and that's the wind. <laughs> it's brutal. But, you yeah, know, when you first start, everybody's laughing and joking, mm-hmm. and, and it's new and, the exciting. camaraderie is exciting and and that kind of thing you're a little further apart but what's funny is it got a little quieter towards the top before we knew where the top was mm-hmm. for where we where we knew we were stopping it got more jovial when we could see it right hmm. yeah because it was it was within striking distance before that in that middle part people got more quiet but we got closer like I literally 
was shoulder to shoulder with somebody and I was trying to take a step when somebody stepped in front of me, I was trying to step right in line with theirs so that we were all together in lockstep going up mm -hmm. this mountain. Um, and as it got colder, there is some, there is, as you've connected to mind and body and the power of that, there's a certain amount of concentration mm -hmm. that you need and a more of a meditative state. And so that brings on a little more quiet, yeah. right? One of the guys, Eric, unbelievable dude. He did it barefooted. Hmm. He did it barefooted with his bathing suit on. Wow. Yeah, un <laughs> unbelievable. And I asked him what was different for him. And he said that, that really towards, you know, when he was walking through the snow and ice and getting towards the top, one of the things was he could only interact with people and, and talk with them for 10, 15 seconds before he would have to go back in and, 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 hmm. and refocus. Wow. So I can imagine a couple hundred yards up him <laughs> having a feeling of total regret of making that decision. <laughs> yeah. I kept asking him. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, what, who, what am I trying to prove? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I, that's what I asked him. I was like, "You regretting that now?" I mean, we, I was. I Man, was like, these boots are warm. Yeah, <laughs> I got my three. feet were cold inside my boots. <laughs> I was like, "Dude." But, so, so what would you say? You know, a practical application. So, the person that's watching this, listening to this, that doesn't necessarily have the means or just the opportunity to go do an experience like that. Right. When you talk about seeking discomfort but specifically seeking discomfort with somebody else like mm -hmm. what is that what could that look like in their own life to be able to again maybe not experience fully what you went through but to be able to grow and progress in their journey you know it can be any number of things right there's there's always ways physically that we can seek discomfort mm -hmm. There's ways in sales that if that if that if oh man, it's like taking it's like taking candy from babies. You've been doing it for a long time and you make 50 phone calls a day. But what could you do? What could you accomplish? And could you shorten the time and do twice as much? And and would that be uncomfortable? Yeah. Press yourself there. Press yourself. Um, I think if you're listening to a podcast, you're looking for you're looking for ways to better yourself. Right. If you're looking for ways to better yourself, then you need to enter the uncomfortable zone. And and whether that's, hey, in your nice warm shower this morning, cut it on full blast cold for the next two or three minutes and end with that. End with that. You know, if if there's a million breathing meditations online, there's a, there's there's tons of different ways to do this. And Wim Hof has an application online where you where you go through his breathing. And the breath is really fascinating because like you said, I can control it, mm -hmm. but it happens automatically too. It is the link. Your breath is the link between mind, body, and spirit. It's the link. Um, no matter what you believe religiously, I mean, this is physiological, this is science, right? So, so that's the link. So so doing those 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 breathing techniques or meditations um, and 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 going into that, that's uncomfortable. Remember, you you I would do them in the office sometimes five <laughs> years ago and you were like, dude, you are insane. And and all of the Wim Hof stuff says do not do those in water, don't do them yeah. in water. And I was doing them in my cold pool at four in the morning <laughs> with nobody around like an idiot. Um, till I passed out in the bathtub one day and that, that taught me a lesson, mm -hmm. um, which was good. It wasn't fatal. Um, but, uh, but, um, but, but you want to press yourself into that uncomfortable zone. Um, and whatever that looks like for you. And, and I've talked to people and they're like, well, I hate the cold. Well, it has nothing to do with whether you like it or not. It's teaching you something. It's teaching you something. The discomfort will teach you something. And you know, I forgot to mention this, but when I came up out of the cold water for the first time, I'd been in my house for a couple of years. I came up out of that cold water and, and walked up out of there. You know, my legs weren't, 
weren't quite working. You're like, holy crap, I can't feel my feet. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. It's hurting like crazy. It feels like there's a thousand needles in you. And and you're like, oh my gosh. And and I had gone under with my head. And so it felt I felt like I had ice cream headache, <laughs> you know? And 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 but when I stood up on the pool deck, I looked up and everything changed. Hmm. I saw the stars for the first time in my own backyard. Hmm. I noticed them and they were beautiful and I appreciated them. And and some of you listeners are gonna think, well, that's airy fairy. Well, I thought so too. Mm -hmm. um, but that one thing connected me just a little deeper. And the more connected you are, the more you understand yourself, the more aware you become of what you need to work on or what needs to exit your life or what needs to enter your life. And so that mind-body connection is very powerful. And man, I can't tell you how excited I am that, that you're going. Yeah. And um, yeah, even like with what you're just saying at, at the very, very beginners stage of uh, last yesterday was the fifth day in a row. I've done uh, the breathing exercises, even just in that, as soon as I finish, I feel like my senses are at like an all time high. Like yep. I feel like I can hear. I've even recently, I, I feel like there's like a sh like a. Mm -hmm. a noise that I'm hearing in both ears for like the next minute mm -hmm. um, that wasn't there during and wasn't there before. But beyond that, just being able to hear more around me. And, and as you start to feel your body and it tells you to start wiggling your fingers and toes first, you can feel more mm -hmm. like you're more, you're, you're just, you're, you have a heightened level of awareness of everything yep. in and around you, um, which has been very interesting. And, and I've been, and I'm, probably made fun of you the most you for did doing it you did and as i've started doing it i'm fascinated by it and just want to go deeper and deeper and to see you know what levels of discomfort that i can possibly find because i know there's plenty you know what i just thought of when you said that i don't know how many times we've said it and it's almost a cliche now that self-awareness is the predecessor to success in any area of life and it's a big, it's a big cliche now, self-awareness, self-awareness, self-awareness. But you just said I could, my feelings were heightened and I was more what? Aware. aware. Mm -hmm. And so you become aware. My decision-making process in business has completely changed over the last five years. I was lightning fast to decide before and slow to execute. And that is painful. Hmm. Now, I think things through differently. I see it from a lot of different angles and I'm slower to decide, but lightning fast to execute, right? Once the decision's made. We were talking about it the other day. There's not really a lot of right and wrong decisions. People are like, well, I hope I make the right decision. And I just take all the stuff, breathe some, make a decision, then make it right. Mm -hmm. Then get on down the road. Right? I think a lot of that too, you know, when you talk about the unconditional love and kindness is your decision-making now <clears throat> through that filter of love and kindness is more encompassing all parties involved. And how does this right. affect that person, that person, that person, that person, that person by me making this decision? Right. But then once you're able to do that and make that decision, executing on it and knowing that you are putting everybody else's interests um, at the forefront as well, which is huge. Absolutely. Yeah. So, well, very cool. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this. There's a lot of information. <clears throat> um, definitely look up Wim Hof on Instagram, the app, things called the Wim Hof Breathing Method. Uh, if you look at it, uh, look it up on the app store, um, but check it out and just try it. Uh, it's nothing dangerous. There's nothing that like you can do this breathing technique. Don't do it while you're driving. Don't do it in, in water. Yeah, I've done uh, both. It's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but give this stuff a try. And beyond this, this is just one example of an infinite number of things that you could try that you've never done before uh, to, again, seek discomfort and uh, start that growth process and journey in your own life. So 
With that, this is episode 155 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. We are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Ow!